Western Australia, way up north, is this wonderful area called the Kimberley. It's an almost completely pristine environment. It's completely untouched by um, human development. Uh, in the western part of that is a massive humpback whale carving ground. It's the, it's the biggest one in the world. Right at this location, uh, a big Australian company called Woodside, along with multinational partners and the West Australian government, is proposing a mega gas facility, the second biggest in the world so far, and a massive international seaport, which will very much displace those whales, pollute their waters, and introduce thousands of ship movements every year, year with all of the dangers to life that that brings. As this is an extremely important breeding ground for the humpback whales, this would impact their ability to have their population grow and certainly to sustain that healthy population, they need breeding grounds like this. You know, there's only so many places on the planet that are suitable for these animals to be breeding, and this is one of them. Along the journey up the east coast of Australia, we've been greeted with dolphins and whales, seals, seabirds, almost every day. That's like a beautiful reminder to the crew that, that this is what we're going to protect. You know, it is specifically the whales. It's this whale nursery that is in jeopardy and it's in danger. It's really easy for people to point fingers and bad guy, the Japanese whaling fleet, because they are the ones that are physically putting a harpoon into the, into the spines of these whales. But the oil companies are doing the exact same things. You know, they're gonna be responsible for the, for the depletion of the oceans, for the depletion of whale stocks, by destroying this nursery, by destroying their home. What's gonna happen off the coast of Kimberley could be much more detrimental to the, to the lives of whales, and it could be much worse than, than the Japanese whaling fleet. Alongside all this very kind of bleak and negative picture, there very much is hope because even the companies themselves have not yet made a final investment decision on the, on the project. So they're intending to get together and sit, sit together and look at how things are going in the first half of 2013 and decide whether or not they really want to invest their money on this particular avenue. Having made the two-week passage from Melbourne, the Steve Irwin arrived on the opposite edge of the continent at Walmadam in the early morning to the site of humpbacks breaching on the horizon. where James Price Point is and what, um, what the local people call Walmadan is a, a group of people called the Galarabalu. The Galarabalu are the custodians of the land there. The Galarabalu people have been struggling hard on this issue for quite some time now, for several years. They have followed Sea Shepherd's work in the Southern Ocean, very aggressively defending uh, marine life down there. 
they hoped that we could lend the same kind of assistance in the waters that they are custodians over. Okay, my name's Philip Rowe, I'm from the Glarable Land Group, and I'm a senior law boss with my brother Joe and Richard. We look after this country, it's been handed from our grandfather, and we, we are fighting to stop this proposal of this gas, gas plant. That part of the hill up there, back in there, all that, they're going to build sort of an inland harbour. So all the vine tickets, all the middens, this burial site there, it's going to be bulldozed. And it's, it's not good. You know, we are the original people of Australia. They should really and truly look at us because that crown doesn't represent me. It doesn't represent no indigenous people around Australia or the original people around Australia. It's just ludicrous what, what the Barnett government is doing. This is our future for our younger generation. My, my kids, their kids, my grandchildren, their children. This is home, this is their uni. This is their universe, you know? Uni where they, they learn their culture and heritage and things. Once we arrived on the Kimberley coast, we were invited to come ashore by the Galarabalu people. As a show of thanks to our presence there, the Galarabalu men held a, a corroboree for us. Before we left the docks in Williamstown to embark on the voyage up to the Kimberley, uh, we were visited by a representative of the of the people of the Dampier Peninsula. He took us through a smoking ceremony and he presented us with a shell, which was a symbol of strength on our voyage. He also gave us some of the pindan, which is the red coloured um, soil of that stretch of coast, and the ashes from similar ceremonies that he'd done previously. Uh, he, he asked me that if um, once we arrived up on the Kimberley coast that we would deliver them to the people up there. We had the opportunity to fill, fulfil uh, Rodney's wishes and, and bring that stuff back to country. When the Australian continent was settled by Europeans, almost the majority of indigenous people were displaced from the land that, they, that had once supported them. But because of the isolation of the Kimberley Coast, it's one of the very last remaining areas where the original people still have a true connection with their land. Sea Shepherd's purpose here would be to show people directly what all of us would lose if Woodside's project were to proceed. We'd invited people to come on board the ship and sail right up to the site of the proposal to James Price Point. On the first day of Operation Kimberley Me and Imbi, we went ashore to embark campaign leader Bob Brown and to invite the first traditional owners on board. significant people, people whose um, comprehension of the situation there might be able to be spread to wider effect. We we're, were trying to bring what had been a fairly local issue and an easy issue for the, um, for the companies and the governments kind of in question to sort of like somewhat just brush over, make it into much more a national and international issue. So we invited 
on um, federal politicians, influential musicians and journalists, journalists who have um, news outlets both nationally and around the world. Welcome on board everyone, on board the Steve Earle, which is Sea Shepherd's flagship vessel of the fleet. Woodside's proposal seeks legitimacy in an 8,000 page environmental impact assessment that concludes very few whales would be within 8 kilometres of the coastline. As a crew and as a ship, we had a very clear purpose in what we would, we would bring to the campaign for James Price Point. It was clear that it was absolutely ridiculous that Woodside's claims that this was not a whale carving ground, all we needed to do was, um, was show it. The main company that's pushing for this gas hub, uh, Woodside, the main argument they made that there was no whales really, you know, they were sitting eight kilometres off the coast and here we are only three kilometres off the coast and we've got a mother and a calf, she's nursing her young and nurturing her in this area and uh, it just clearly shows that the, the science that's been put forth by Woodside is incorrect uh, and that these whales will be under serious threat from harm boat strikes, dredging, noise pollution if this project goes ahead. So this is what the whole mission was about and we've, we've already achieved it on, on only the very start of the campaign. Wow, look at that. That's what's at stake largest humpback whale nursery in the world. The place where these guys are born, this is their home and it's under threat and we have to do everything we can to make sure that this gas hub does not go ahead. One of the assets we brought with us was the helicopter and with, with that we were able to actually situate people right up over the site and give them that real true overview of what the site's going to look like. It's because already um, Woodside's mapped out this huge grid of area which allows us quite clearly to see the, the magnitude of the destruction that will be caused there. Well, it's just uh, an ocean of joy out here. But if you fly just over the coastline there, and I mean some hundreds of metres, here laid out, suburb size, is the footprint of this massive gas factory. It's almost unimaginable 
the tragedy waiting to unfold here if Australians don't rise to the occasion and say we won't put up with that. It's wrong, we won't put up with it. The really interesting thing about all this is that the project can happen somewhere else. Um, Woodside is investigating two other really good alternatives. One of them is to pipe the gas a few hundred miles down the coast to the Pilbara where a facility like this um, already exists. And in a few years the, uh, the gas that that facility is processing is forecast to begin to run low. So it makes really good econ economic sense for them to send the gas down there and continue with existing infrastructure. As I said before, the shareholders will get just as good a return out of processing this gas at an alternate site. The board, however, has got themselves locked in a bunker on this issue. They staked their position so clearly they don't know how to get out of it. And that is a very dangerous thing for the board of any company to do, and particularly for its chairman, Michael Cheney. And I would say to Michael Cheney and the board, get yourselves out of this hole before it's too late. This project is just getting more and more and more opposition. The intervention of the Sea Shepherd is just one more powerful example of that. Come out of the bunker, take the blinkers off, open your eyes up and look at the alternatives. You can take the initiative. You don't have to wait for the government. It is your responsibility not to destroy this wonderful place. The reason that Woodside's been so stubborn and so arrogant about pushing um, for this proposal to occur at the James Price Point Walmadan site is because basically they've been forced into a, a corner by the state government who wants to be remembered for opening up the Kimberley region to export. So the, the Kimberley has many other resources other than the gas reserves that are offshore. They have diamonds, nickel, tin, zinc, lead, and onshore gas as well. So really, in, in a sense, this is the state government being, in a, in a very narrow and economic sense, quite smart really, because they're forcing a, a corporation to um, install infrastructure for them. But in doing so, they'll decimate the Australian West Coast humpback whale population, and that's just something that's not acceptable for any economic development reason. Well, they commissioned the study, which they said was the biggest study ever done into humpback whales. Uh, it wasn't anything of the kind, and it was a very biased study, and it's been discredited by everyone, from the federal government's own study to just, in the last day, Murdoch University. If this project ever gets built, it relies on about 1,500 large vessel movements a year coming into the port here and the wharf will go about two kilometres out to sea, so right into the whale carting area. 
and you can imagine, you know, 1,500 massive tankers coming in here and all, all the support vessels running around. If that isn't going to cause major disruption to the life pattern of these wonderful animals, I can't imagine what would. I think you're just echoing exactly what Jeff said before. I couldn't imagine 1,500 tankers in here a year. And, and not, not to mention th these beautiful beans in this beautiful turquoise water. This water won't be turquoise. This will be white with sediment and dredging remains. Because I have to constantly dredge this water, constantly dredge this water. Sitting in a small boat and have the mother whale come up and down straight towards the boat and then go around the end of it and her calf bringing its tail over. That's an experience I'll take with me for every day of the rest of my life. Seeing the whales today, again, off James Price Point, mothers, babies, bull whales, seeing the count uh, going up into the thousands of these whales, the assurance that they'd be okay with a mega port, with mega gas ships, with a huge factory ashore, is now clearly proven wrong. Encapsulate the whole story. You know, basically, with this, the spine of it is, you know, when you have your when you have your land, you have your culture, then, then you have all you need. I am what I am, and I am strong. Cause I got my land. Up to now, this entire debate has been entirely composed of political and economic themes, but what economics and politics just don't account for at all now is ideas about beauty and about biodiversity and about the, the fact that um, the, the human sort of anthropocentric worldview is, is only a tiny part of what existence and life on earth is all about. Well, I tell you a story about a girl named Kimberly who all the cowboys wanted cause she was wild and free but now there's fussing and there's fighting we all take insides while the cowboys are playing their old game of conquer and divide. This whale nursery's been intact and, uh, and unscathed by modern industrial development. It should be kept free. This, this nursery can't go somewhere else, but that gas factory can. Well, I love wilderness areas. So I think uh, there are very few left in the world. And uh, I think these are resources that are disappearing all around the world. The oil. The gas, it lasts 40 or 50 years and then the value is gone from it. Whereas the wilderness areas become more and more and more valuable as there are fewer of them. And for governments not to see that is incredibly short-sighted. I guess it boils down to how you see it. Do you see Kimberly? Or just another goddamn hole in the ground? Since departing the Kimberley Coast, we've certainly seen a much higher profile for the issue in the press. Every time now that something occurs, that a company makes a decision or someone makes a comment on, on the issue, there's a story about it now. So for the first time, um, the, the status of the Kimberley Coast is a talking point and it's, it's something that we're aware of throughout the country, it's become a national concern. Well, I don't want to leave. 
You know, life doesn't allow for anything else, but I don't want to leave here. And the good folk of Broome and uh, the Galara Blue people up on the coastline here who are standing in defence of this, uh, the best message I can give is that Sea Shepherd and I uh, are not leaving. We're going over the Nullarbor to campaign to see that this place stays alive. But you never know what you got until it's gone.